We know quite a bit about electric fields now, which go from positive charge to negative charge. And we know about magnetic fields, which go from north to south. But what happens when we combine the two? When you put electricity and magnetism together, what comes out of that? It turns out that combining electricity and magnetism can have many interesting effects, and we're going to examine some of them for the last section of this paper, electromagnetism. First, let's look at a wire with a current flowing through it. What happens when you stick electrical current in a magnetic field? Imagine you have a piece of copper wire like this, and you pass a current through it. Here the current goes from the bottom to the top of the wire. As usual, we label it as capital I. Hey, what's happened? A magnetic field has appeared. See those blue circles? They show that the field loops around the wire like a big cylinder, not as a series of straight lines. We label magnetic fields with a capital B. Like all fields, this one has a certain direction. It curves anti-clockwise around the wire. Anti-clockwise? How do we know it's not clockwise? We have a very handy rule for working out the direction. It's called the right hand grip rule. To use it, simply give yourself a thumbs up. Brainy physicists have shown mathematically that this rule works, but you must use your right hand, not the left one. First, point your thumb in the direction the current is flowing in. In this case, it's straight up. And that's all you have to do. Your fingers curl around the same way as the magnetic field lines. That's how you know their direction. Again, remember to use your right hand for this. Because any current carrying wire generates its own magnetic field like that, funny things happen when you put such a wire into an already existing field. Here we have a magnetic field going straight into the screen, shown by the crosses. There's a copper wire passing through it at right angles to the field lines. An electrical current flows along the wire from left to right. There are two magnetic fields here, the one shown by the crosses and the one generated by the current. It's like we have two magnets. And do you remember what happens when you put two magnets together? You get a force. Here is the force acting on the wire, and it points straight up. We can calculate the size of that force, and it turns out to be the size of the current times the strength of an external magnetic field times the length of wire exposed to that field. This gives us the equation F equals BIL, which appears on your fantastic formula sheet. How do we know the force points up, not down or any other way? Again, there's a rule for it. This one is the right hand slap rule. Hold your right hand out like this, with your thumb and fingers as far apart as you can get them. Imagine there are three arrows coming out, one from your thumb, one from the tips of your fingers, and one straight up from your palm. The arrow coming from your thumb represents the direction of current. So once again, the thumb means current. Your fingers point in the direction of the magnetic field lines. The third arrow, from your palm, represents the force on the wire. It's like the force you get from a hard slap. Hence, the right hand slap rule. Try it out now in this situation. The magnetic field goes into the screen, so your fingers point that way too. Turn your hand so your thumb points to the right with the current. That leaves your palm facing upward, so that's where the force is applied. Notice that F, B and I are all at right angles to each other. If B and I are parallel, if the current flows parallel to the magnetic field lines, then you get no force at all. This is a very important thing to keep in mind. We have a special name for what we've just talked about. It's the motor effect. If you have electrical current flowing through a magnetic field, there's a force on the wire carrying that current. The direction of the force, as you just saw, can be determined with the right hand slap rule. We have an equation for the size of the force, which is F equals BIL. Always include units when you're calculating a force. It's measured in newtons. This is the same force that makes electric motors work, like the ones in your motorbike or car. Even fancy Italian rides depend on this principle to get moving. Next time, we shall check out what happens when you throw a charged particle into a magnetic field. It's electromagnetism at the smallest scale.